Out of there. It's a busy time of year. Okay. That's um, right. You want to take that over there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to walk over with him, wheel brown, gather some meat, and we go. Yeah. There wasn't much room in there. That's a good thing. <laughs> For me. <laughs> Yeah, sure, hop in. Juan, give her um, Ed a ride, okay? Ed, before you leave, you gotta look at my mush, my uh, chest up. The more vital, the better. But this stuff is pretty good still. And the great thing about learning how to do good compost is you see that chickweed there? Chickweed's one of my favorite plants. But it sure can cover up a garden. And it'd be nice to not have quite as many coming up in the fall. <laughs> we get it hot, we got control. You know? um, if you just crack me up again, somebody was advertising about how all that chickweed and dandelions were ruining the lawns and they had the poison for them. Going, just eat them. Just eat them. You, know? <laughs> you don't have to poison them. Just eat them. Okay, this here we're not going to take. Um, and John will appreciate this. John, you know why we're not going to take it, right? Uh, what's in there? Too much dirt. It's real heavy. Uh, so this relates to that thing we were talking, something tight with something light. Yeah, this is pretty tight once you get into it. I didn't see the dirt. It's right not going to breathe well, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, a solution might be for a home person. I mean, it's small scale. I mean, we're not going to do it on large scale. We just let it rot down on the path, right? You might actually take the handful of it and just plunge it in, in a bucket of water and pull it up real sharply. You might pull most of the dirt off that way, you know? Um, what I do is when I'm weeding, I have something like this fork and I just do this a lot when, I, when I've got a pile and I get most of it out and I, whatever's left, I just leave it there, you know, where the dirt's on the bottom and I didn't get the last bit and I set it aside so that, you know, it's ready to go. So we're just looking at the kind of materials you want to gather. We could use these stalks too, I don't think we need to. Um, we might see, no, that, that's just small, we're going to leave that. Okay, let's go back this way now. So uh, what Pat's referring to is, is structure of the pile. Okay, it's a lot like building a little campfire. You know, if you just laid all the wood flat and lit it, you're not going to get the convection of air, and you're not going to get the air going through it. You're not going to get the good heat to make a great fire. Well, we're just making a super slow fire, right? But we got to have it loose enough that air gets in and creates that convection structure. That's what makes the compost run by itself. And there are other ways, and we'll show you one that has some forced air to it over here. But it's fun. I had someone like his mom or his grandma made the best compost and what she did was she put lots of sticks in it. And that's why it got hot, they figured out, you know. Now the sticks wouldn't rot so they had to sip them back out. <coughs> and you can use sticks for that, you know. So, you know, if we didn't have enough stocking material, I'd be jumping for joy that I saw that. <laughs> yeah. We have enough that it doesn't matter. Okay, this is slightly off topic, but I could rake up a bunch of turnip residue here. I won't because they happen to be, the leaves happen to be covered with good predators. So sometimes you say, oh, my compost ingredient has a higher use, you know? Tons of little, if we had time, we maybe during a lunch break, we go up and look at some of the other turnips. There's tons of bait, tiny little parasitized aphids, Baconid wasp, millions of ladybugs, ladybug aphids. So I let that stuff sit there. 
if it was a little bigger and it was like a little cooler, slower time of year, I might be able to wait and come back and get that stuff for dry material, you know. But this, with this heat we're having and rain, it's going to disappear into the ground, you know. Um, that might be all we managed to find, but I think we might just have a few more as we walk along. Also, if we had more time, you would think that from 9.30 to 4.30 it was all the time in the world, but it's not, unfortunately. <laughs> we would stop and we would harvest out all these tiny little kales and stuff and collars that are done. And we would quickly side, these are too aphid covered, these we want to leave for predators, these we're going to eat, and what's left we would throw in here. Because this time of year we want to get all this stuff out of the garden so we're not carrying over harlequin bugs and stuff, you know. So fall and spring cleanup are great times to pull your ingredients together for a compost pile. It just gets more complex when you start factoring in beneficial insects and allowing harborage and stuff like that, you know. Um. So uh, back at Mathers Maxims, what we saw there, uh, you know, something tight with something light, and then um, something quick, something quick with something slow. Mm -hmm. These greens are fairly quick to break down, mm -hmm. so the, and the carbon is slower. So you think about it that way too. Ooh. And as you get better at choosing your nitrogens and stuff, you'll, you'll also start remembering that some nitrogens are faster than others. Uh, chicken manure is, is a quicker or faster nitrogen than uh, pork manure. And there's like little fine tunings you can do. That is really, I mean, that's such an important part there. People just don't get fast and slow carbon and nitrogen, you know? Why don't we use sawdust and compost piles? It's too slow. It takes years and years and years, sometimes 20 years, to break down, you know? People are all the time are putting wood in their compost. It's not good. It's great if you're doing shrubs, you know? Because the wood, trees and shrubs, woodland plants are used to running just on fungal mechanisms for nutrients. But if you're trying to grow vegetables which need bacterial, and you're adding those really slow um, carbons, it doesn't work. And you can also, let's say you're composting fish waste with nothing, but wood, quickly the fish waste to be gone and there wouldn't be enough nitrogen to finish the carbon. So then you have to screen the wood back out. You know? And sometimes we might do that. Um, Knowing you'll screen it back out. Yeah, because yeah. the passive aerated windrow system was using cannabis specifically for fish waste. You put all this fish and these ingredients into this pile and you cover it with a little bit of compost, no odor. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you open it up, you blend the aged compost that's on the outside in with the fish, screen off the wood, boom, you got great product. But you better be sure the wood is a size you can get back now, out again. Yeah, now it's big wood and you're screening yeah. it off. Yeah. So if you don't have a good screen, we'll show you a great screening system here too. Wasn't even on our outline, but we'll have to show it to them. All right? Yeah. It's still here, that's okay. That's the neat thing about being on farm. You don't have to remember everything because you can just say, oh, look at that, and use that too. I, of course, left my handouts back there. So I got mine. <laughs> Yeah, but did you haul any, any um, materials? <laughs> no, that's not my job. Pat, I have those materials. Oh, thank you. I have your hand out. Thank you. Very much. Somebody's got my back. I appreciate it. Uh, back, also in those maxims was sweet with sour. So sweet would be pretty fresh material. Sour would be old funky stuff. And uh, that's another like, fine thing. But the idea is for every one of those things, you, you have the other to balance it. And that's why I put that part of that manual in there, because it helps to you think about it intuitively. Critique of this siting of this of this pile would be looks like a low area right here and you're getting leachated into this water. <laughs> and even worse, it's gonna pile up right there. You know? Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. actually make a trench to run it away that way, you know? Um, this, the leachate to here is probably not a big deal. There's plenty of grass where it's going, you know. So what you're looking at is on the first page of your handout. This is the passively aerated windrow system. So those are septic treatment pipes. And uh, I smell a little ammonia somewhere. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cranking. It's cranking. Uh, septic treatment pipes with the holes faced up, right? So the, you got this well-made pile and it looks like it's pretty good structure he's not having to push too hard and um, 
because there's heat in the inside and you got the convection structure like like a wood stove or a campfire air is sucked in the heat's pulling going up everything's coming off the top um, <clears throat> So we're at 132 right there. And this was made last night. What? It appears this as though is, there's, there's mulch or something in there. I mean, and you know what it is? It's, this is cow manure where they use corn stalks. Okay. After they, they pick the corn for feed, yeah. they use the corn stalks for bedding. It's ideal material. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know where I got it? I can't tell you. <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> but it's ideal material. Corn, corn is one of the very, don't you think corn is one of the best bulking agents? Yeah. Corn stalks. Yeah. It rots slowly, but it's not super slow, um, and it just like gives such incredible bulking. I just yeah. when I found this, I was like, "Oh yes, Juan, don't you love this stuff?" <laughs> yeah, it just works so, so good. Pat, so our, our compost bin at home, we should cover. Yes, we're yes, yeah, we're going to get into that. So okay. we're at kind of like farm scale right now. We're going to drop okay. down to backyard scale, okay. and uh, but like right here in the middle, one forty-two. See, there's like a chimney in there, and all the heat's rising. See, the, the, you these get are close the, here, you can waft the little ammonia. Well, that's nitrogen that's leaving. We're trying to capture that. Well, if we had more carbon in there, we might be able to capture it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. It's the way warm. people get the, the way this works, it's pretty hot. Is there are pipes there that have holes that normally go down, but we turned them up, you know? And John is much, more, much better, a better person. Uh, oh. He puts things like compost in between the pipes so the pipes don't yeah. move. We just pile the manure on because we're in a hurry and don't have enough compost, which yeah. means the stuff down be between the pipes is going to be anaerobic and not good. Yeah. We'll have to recompost that or feed it to worms. Yeah. You know, we'll have to scrape off above the anaerobic. So it, it goes good and fast that way. Lots of variations have been done on this. Uh, for farm scale, you can buy hog slats. Does everybody know what hog slats are? They, yeah. they look like oh, yeah. pallets made out of cement. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of using these, they lay out a set of hog slats because you can pop your uh, little bobcat on top of them and scrape off easy. Other people, uh, they'll put sawdust, they'll put wood chips and sawdust in between and harvest above it. Because mm -hmm. like Pat was saying, the air is not going to suddenly go down and go back up. Everything above the pipes is going to be great, and even part way in, it's going to be great. But right in the middle, that's not going to be so good. When I did this at the University of Maryland, they didn't get that part. And after 20 weeks, we took it off. It was, it was almost perfect compost, but between the pipes, the manure was still green, like the day we put it in. We had just preserved it. So people get that the holes are facing up. The cold air is pulled in through this, goes up through the holes, and goes through the heat rising through the pile. So you got a chimney effect. That's why you need that bulk density to be right. If it's too dense, the air goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, is that a permeable cover then? Is that a permeable cover? This is cover? this is a fancy cover, and you know I always try to encourage people, and we'd be happy to be a hub for people to do that. We'd probably charge them an administrative fee, um, but we wouldn't try to make a profit on it. This is for about it was, I think it's probably about five hundred twenty-five dollars for one hundred and sixty-five feet. It's called Top Tex, Top -tex. and it's. They guarantee it for 10 years. I've had stuff that's older than 10 years. Yeah. It doesn't ever go degrade if you take care of it. And um, it's kind of like Gore-Tex in that it's so dense that water runs off it, but gas can go through it. So it breathes, but it sheds the water. And that's the perfect thing. If you you want to keep rain off your pile for two reasons. Remember we said how important moisture is? Well, if it rains on it, it's stopping wet all the time. And then that's too, that's gonna yeah. like you know make the bulk density very dense. No air can move through it. But also, what happens at rain? Leaching. All these nutrients you're trying to save are just being washed out. You know? Plus, if it's real hot, you got a long pouring rain, you put the fire out. You know? Yeah, so everything you're doing, you're you're trying to control the moisture. That's one of the biggest things you're doing. So this looks pretty good. Cover it in case it was gonna just be a crank and rain all night, we don't know. And, and, and then there's a structure to it. It has a peak, water runs off. Even this windrow cover, if we, if we made like a, a big pool in the middle there and it's filled with water, eventually that water could make its way down into the pile. Right. It's not a roof. It still, it sheds in the first few minutes. It fills up with water and then sheds. On the other side of the coin, like July, now you're, you're, you're uh, getting to your six or eight week time in your process and you're trying to hold water in. That will hold water in. So, the, so the, the, the evaporation is coming off and more moisture is staying and then some of the gases are leaving, but it helps to hold water in too. So it goes both ways. 
and uh, some companies develop special windrow cover applicators. So as you turn the pile, the windrow cover comes off and lays down on the pile. And when you get into big commercial operations, you can do that. But for a backyard bin, which I guess you got one over there. Yep, yep. we showed them it, yeah. A little piece of this goes a long way. By the way, big winds was gonna blow away. We found that tires work good. John, not wanting mosquitoes to bother them, took a um, saws saw off. off and cut a slit in the tires so they drained. Yeah, because otherwise, down. you know, I know when you're moving the tires, like, ah, you're always getting this gross, <laughs> disgusting, whatever it is, uh, yeah. tire yeah, water goo. Would this still look if it was much smaller? Like, oh, yeah, we're going to show that, actually. We're going to go, we're going to yeah. make a pile. Okay. Real quickly. Is, now, is that going to sit there for six months, or are you going to turn it? Um, no, we, we, it'll sit here probably for um, six to eight weeks. It's going to be incorporated into a new greenhouse site. It'll be composted enough to take care of the pathogens, you know, and then we'll just grow a cover crop on it and finish yeah. it in the soil. In four to six weeks, the volume will drop yeah. in half. And we'll have, we'll have basically fried all the weed seeds, you know. Um, we might try to um, scrape the outside off and put that in another compost okay. pile because we want to, you know, we want to be sure that we've got the heat to have killed the weed seeds and the pathogens. Uh, the state's fancy word for that is PFRP path path process to further reduce pathogens. You want to be over 132 degrees right for 15 days if you're turning a pile or if you have a vessel three days this is more like a vessel because it's covered it's got the stationary active active that works actively but it's a passive system for aeration you know? does anybody research what happens to like gmo corn and stuff when it's then gone nobody has on? researched it i'm actually confident that things like gmo corn uh -huh. nature will fix it you know um there's somebody out there that can eat that that awful stuff they're making. I'm not worried about it at the composted stage. Uh -huh. I think you're probably fine. I wouldn't be shocked if there wasn't some GMO corn in I'm this. I'm sure there yeah. must be. Is yeah. there any non-GMO corn in there? Well, <laughs> if it's organic. I mean, oh, it might be yeah. contaminated slightly, but it's still a qualify, you know? Uh -huh. I think composting will take care of that pretty good. Okay. I got lots of problems with GMO, but I do think we can compost it, you know? There are some things you can't compost. We should mention that briefly. Yes. Um, one question. Some of the, the information on hugel culture, they um, recommend that you don't use wood chips or wood that's um, conifer. Um, would you not use a conifer wood chip in a pile like this? Or I wouldn't worry about it. It wouldn't bother me at all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's more about... It's broken down enough. No, it might not be. Uh -huh. A conifer chip is a chip. See, so you yeah. don't want to use talk wood about chips. Not, you can't get back period. out, period. Chips You're taking so long, yeah. so I might use it as a bulking agent. Right. No, and I'm going to screen it out later. Uh -huh. so. If you can't get it out, don't put it in your compost. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, you don't want it in your compost. A pile wood like, does not work in compost. Uh -huh. A pile like this, okay, you're thinking agriculture, you're, you're going to break it down to almost not visible. Mm -hmm. and do we still have? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll show you. This.